Okay, so this is leading directly on from the last video where we looked at errors that were in the um, hypothesis testing of a binomial distribution. So again, we're looking at a Poisson distribution, which is discrete. And we'll just jump straight into an example because it's very similar to what you've already seen. So we have this first example where x follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of lambda and our null hypothesis is that lambda is 8. And the alternative hypothesis is that our mean is less than 8. This is going to be tested at a 5% significance level. We're going to find the critical region and the probability of getting a type 1 error. So first of all, we need to find the critical region, which means some value of c, which gives us the probability that x is less than or equal to c as being less than the 5% significance level. We're looking at x being less than or equal to c since our alternative hypothesis is that lambda is a, a less than uh, the mean that was stated. So we try out different values and we see what happens. We're going to start with a 2 here. That gives us a value of 0 0.0138. That's not hit the 5% yet, so now we'll try out a 3. That's also not up to the 5%. Now a 4 gets us over 5%. So less than or equal to 3 was um, within that less than 5% range and the 4 puts it over the 5%. So our critical value is that 3. That's the uh, point at which you'll be in the probability small enough so that it's less than 5% and you would reject your null hypothesis. Okay, so the probability of a type 1 error, that means that the null hypothesis was rejected when it was actually true. So that's the probability x could be less than or equal to 3 on this um, null hypothesis. So it's that value there. So it's a 4.2% significance level. Okay, now the pro what would be the probability of a type 2 error if lambda was actually 6? So we need the probability that x gets accepted but the null hypothesis was actually wrong and we would accept an alter we would have an alternative uh, lambda of being 6 so for the null hypothesis to be accepted x would have to be bigger than 3 so the probability it would be less than or equal to 3 when lambda is 6 is as follows so now we can do 1 minus that and we get our value of um it, the probability x would be accepted but lambda was actually 6, would be 0.8488. Okay, our second example. Machine produces thread with an average of 7 floors per 100 metres. After some repairs were done, there were 27 floors in the first 300 metres produced by this machine. We're going to carry out a hypothesis test at 5% um, to see if the mean number of floors has changed. So first of all, we need to change it up to a 300 metre length since that's the, the test statistic that we have. So our null hypothesis is that the mean will be 21. Since it's 7 in 100, we just times that by 3. So our alternative hypothesis is that the mean has changed, it's no longer 21. So with our null hypothesis being 21, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 27 would be calculated by using a normal approximation. Since lambda is more than 15, we don't uh, we can use the the normal approximation to the Poisson distribution. We don't want to add up all of the values from 27 upwards. So we can use this normal approximation and we need to apply a continuity correction to it. Then we carry on those calculations and we get the probability being 0.1151. This is more than 2.5%, so there's not enough evidence to think that the mean has changed. We're looking at 2.5% because this is a two-tailed test. So uh, the significance level was 5%, half of that's 2.5%, and our value doesn't fall in that critical region. Okay, for what values of x would the null hypothesis be rejected? So if we think about our two tails... The z value would have to be 1.96 and minus 1.96 to have that 2.5% on either side. So we apply the calculation to it. Now, 
before that carries on. Let's just pause it there. Um, remember, continuity correction is being added. So on the upper tail, where we're looking for greater than or equal to 1.96, that continuity correction uh, would have had a half, a 0.5 subtracted um, off of its value. And on the left-hand tail, where you're looking at less than or equal to minus 1.96, it would have had the 0.5 added onto its value to get the right sort of region that you're looking for. So then continue on those calculations and we get x is bigger than or equal to 30.38 and less than or equal to 11.51. Now we're looking at uh, discrete numbers, so we need to take the whole values from those uh, inequalities. So now the next question, we want to estimate the actual significance level of the test. So the probability that x did fall in those regions that we just calculated, given that x follows a Poisson distribution of 21. So we can just do one half of that and double it since it's symmetrical. Uh, we'll use a normal approximation again. And then continue on with those calculations. Make sure you apply the continuity correction. So we're working um, to a 3.8 significance level here. Okay, next part, we want to estimate the probability of a type 2 error if the average has actually changed to 10 floors per 100 meters. So type 2 error means that we have accepted the null hypothesis when it wasn't true, when an alternative was true. So, accepted H0 given that lambda is actually equal to 30. Remember, we did this all based on 300 meters. So, we'll multiply that 10 floors per 100 up to be 30 floors per 300. So that's the probability that x fell within that range between 11 and 31 that we were we found was our critical values before, given that x follows a Poisson distribu distribution of 30. Again, we're going to use our normal approximation and apply a continuity correction. That gives us these z values. And you will notice that one of those z values is off of the table that we can look up. So we just take our probability for that to be 0 0.9999 and so on. And that gives us 0 0.5363.